We're going to look at how to find pi by tossing needles onto a sheet of lined paper. Uh, but first, a word from our sponsor, me. Buy my book and read about math and things like that. Okay, now back to our program. Okay, so this is called Buffon's Needle, and here is how it works. Uh, you take a handful of toothpicks or matches or what have you, and you toss it onto a sheet of lined paper uh, or onto a floor with lines on it. You get the picture. They have to be evenly spaced. And from that, you can calculate pi. Isn't that awesome? And now, here's, here's how you do that. Uh, first, uh, you need to measure the length of the match in terms of line spaces on the paper. In this example, uh, the match is six spaces long. Now, notice that that's spaces that we're counting, not how many lines it potentially touches. Okay, it's spaces between the lines. Okay. Now you're going to count the number of matches that cross uh, one of the marked lines. And each time it does that, we call that a hit. The more times you do this, the better approximation you're going to get. You probably guessed that. Okay, now take the total number of matches that you used. That includes the hits and the non-hits. Divide it by the number of hits. Uh, multiply the result by two and voila. So in this picture, a, a hit means the match covers one of these highlighted lines. Here's why it works. We can think of the match's position in terms of two parameters. One measure is the distance of the center from the nearest line, which is L in our diagram here. The other is the position that the match head takes along a semicircle. That's the angle theta. Okay. Now, for a semicircle, theta can be anywhere between 0 and pi. Okay, so now we, there we have our pi snuck in there. The range of values that theta can take without a hit, that depends on L. Our unit length then is the radius of the semicircle, and a hit corresponds to sine theta being greater than or equal to L. Now here we've plotted L and sine theta as functions of theta. Now the distance L is independent of theta. It could be anywhere between 0 and 1. Uh, the plot of L being less than or equal to 1, that forms the rectangle. And the sine theta curve and the area beneath that, that covers those situations where sine theta uh, exceeds L. It's greater than or equal to L. So those are the hits. The proportion of possible hits to all possible match positions is the ratio of the area under the sine curve uh, to the area of the whole rectangle. With a lot of matches, the proportion is going to be pretty close to the probability of a hit. Now, the rectangle's area, it's pi. So the area under the sine curve, we can integrate between 0 and pi, and that gives us the number 2. So the probability of a hit is 2 divided by pi. Now we go back to our original equation, and we see how our playing with matches has approximated pi. Bob's your uncle.